Welcome to Furniture Industry News, the daily podcast that ensures you, the furniture industry professionals, stay informed on the very latest in market trends, sales data, and industry insights. We understand the importance of staying ahead in a competitive environment, and this episode is dedicated to just that. Today, we will navigate through the mixed results of the President's Day sales performance, dissect the challenges 2023 presented to furniture retail, and delve into the predictions shaping up for bedding segments. We'll also investigate the consumer's approach to mattress buying, explore economic outlooks, and changing consumer trends, scrutinize the impact of anti-dumping duties on the industry, and ponder the consequences of potential consolidation among major industry players. Prepare for an episode that's informative and entirely indispensable to your professional acuity. Let's delve in. President's Day has long been regarded as the first significant sales event of the year for furniture retailers, acting as an economic barometer for the months ahead. Recently, we've monitored how this year's sales performance stacked up, and the results can only be characterized as a mixed bag, reflective of both the innovation in retailer strategy and consumer hesitancy. Let's begin with the tale of Providence Enterprises, a formidable presence in the Appalachians through its Ashley and Star Furniture stores. CEO Bob Young bestowed high praise on their President's Day sales, describing the weekend as a powerhouse despite a dip in foot traffic. The impressive outcome, high sales in the face of sparse showroom floors, was largely due to heftier average tickets and robust conversion rates. Remarkably, the betting category took center stage standing out as a robust performer, continuing its year-long trend. In stark contrast, over at Miss Kelly Furniture in Mississippi, the picture painted was one of hopeful yet cautious anticipation. With their 10-day event strategy well underway, CEO Oscar Miss Kelly reported stability rather than growth, attributes the standard performance to a lingering wariness among consumers over persistently high interest rates, which undeniably affected disposable income and purchasing power. Yet what's intriguing is the tactical shift some retailers are making. Miss Kelly Furniture's intriguing offer of a king mattress for the price of a queen is a testament to the creativity required in current market conditions. Despite such endeavors, their betting sales didn't quite hit the mark. Here again, we see higher ticket sales coming to the rescue, helping cushion the shortfall in shopper numbers, a recurring theme echoed by Mitch Keller at Crest Furniture. While he acknowledged the challenging climate, a little sparkle of robust betting sales and strategic advertising through various channels provided some relief. So what's the common thread here? A widespread consumer return to more cautious, deal-driven shopping patterns. The days of pandemic-era shopping exuberance have seemingly tapered off, leaving behind shoppers who are looking for undeniable value before opening their wallets. Retailers, in response, have adeptly accommodated this sentiment with extended sale periods, finance offers, free deliveries, and a plethora of doorbusters to entice spending. In summation, while the President Day's sales performance offers glimmers of optimism, it is overshadowed by a collective consumer anxiety that continues to keep the industry on its toes. Retailers who have mastered the art of high conversion and average ticket value appear to navigate this uncertainty with notable success. We'll be keeping a watchful eye on these evolving trends and strategies as the year progresses, always aiming to bring you the most relevant and impactful insights from the furniture industry front lines. As we reflect on the past year, it's hard to ignore the tumultuous journey that furniture retailers faced in 2023. A lingering softness in consumer demand since the pandemic restrictions lifted has pivoted to a more cautious spending behavior. The result? An evident slump in furniture sales not seen in a considerable time. Indeed, the most recent statistics are sobering. Some retailers experienced declines hovering between 8% to 12%, with some industry stalwarts grappling with downturns of 20% or more. What translated to weaker sales was a complex interplay of factors that carved out this scenario. Firstly, the pandemic's shopping spree meant that many consumers had made significant furniture purchases during lockdowns. Coming out of that period, many shifted their focus and their wallets towards travel and experiences, deprioritizing furniture investments. But an equally impactful force was the inflationary spiral and the Federal Reserve's response, an increased interest rate designed to curb inflation. 
This double-edged sword has raised the cost of credit and the price of goods simultaneously during a time when consumer wallets were already feeling pinched. Now looms the critical question. As signs of recovery appear on the horizon, albeit not expected until late 2024 or 2025, how will furniture pricing strategies evolve? Will prices maintain at these elevated levels, hinging on the hope of a value comparison basis? Or will we see a fallback to pre-pandemic pricing once inventory bought at peak freight rates clears? If prices do decrease, suppose by 10% for argument's sake, how much do traffic and unit sales need to increase to maintain, let alone grow, the dollar volume of sales? In the face of market share battles and industry consolidation, pricing remains a potent weapon. And with a trend towards competitive pricing strategies to gain market share, one might wonder if maintaining higher prices is feasible or is it a transient state? Let's face it, pricing will be a pivotal determinant for industry players to capitalize on the eventual upswing. And while market conditions might suggest otherwise, the shrewdness of each retailer in pricing will, without doubt, be a defining factor in navigating the likely recovery. For now, furniture retailers are in a period of recalibration, pondering over these questions as they plan for the future, readying themselves to embrace the recovery with a strategy that balances consumer demand, competitive pricing, and profitability. As we close out the last leg of the first quarter, we turn our attention to the bedding segment, an industry that touches every household and yet finds itself up against challenging wins. Recent discussions among bedding executives have centered on the bumpy ride of declining retail sales, a topic we must explore with thorough consideration. According to the latest forecast by the International Sleep Products Association, the tides may turn slightly, with a projected increase in sales to $10.6 billion for 2024. An optimistic 1.5% climb from 2023, with unit sales forecasted to hold steady at around $41.3 million. Now, while this slight uptick provides a glimmer of hope, we must acknowledge the continuum of post-pandemic market correction, a reset brought about by a period where demand surged and now sees the consumer base catching its breath. Indeed, two of the largest publicly traded companies within the mattress industry, Leggett and Platt and Temper Sealy International, have reported less than stellar earnings for the final quarter. Amidst restructuring efforts, Leggett has adjusted its outlook for 2024, anticipating a decrease in sales by up to 8%. Temper Sealy, on the other hand, forecasts a restrained growth, something worth noting given the industry's standard patterns. Economic pressures naturally translate into consumer hesitance, and the betting segment isn't immune to this effect. With housing sales sagging under interest rate increases and everyday living costs still dauntingly high, the sleep business faces a less than restful marketplace. As we delve deeper, three critical issues loom over the horizon for industry insiders. For one, ongoing consolidation is set to possibly redraw the competitive scape of the marketplace. Secondly, there stands the potential impact of the recent anti-dumping petition, a regulatory move with the weight to tilt the scales one way or the other for domestic production. And lastly, which perhaps resonates most with the day-to-day -day consumer, is the continued slowdown in spending that touches upon every aspect of our sector, from design and manufacturing to the point of sale. To grasp the essence of these issues, it's imperative to monitor key indicators, such as housing market trends, shifts in consumer sentiment, and the maneuvers of prominent industry players. Only by understanding these multifaceted challenges can stakeholders navigate through turbulent times and perhaps harness the winds of change to their advantage. As industry professionals, it's upon us to keep an ear to the ground, anticipating challenges, recalibrating strategies, and ultimately securing a healthy and prosperous future for the betting segment. It is these efforts that forge resiliency in an industry where comfort isn't just a product feature, it's the goal of every decision made. When it comes to purchasing a new mattress, consumers enter a world filled with options, marketing messages, and various strategies that influence their buying decisions. Take, for instance, the approach of three different women during a retreat in South Carolina. While the topic of mattresses sprang up organically, the discussion revealed much about consumer preferences and habits in today's market. One individual was swayed by a glowing recommendation from a friend, ready to purchase a king set for merely $700 without having felt it for herself. Her logic, a 120-day comfort guarantee, would suffice for a trial period. 
She belonged to the baby boomer generation, illustrating the compelling power of price in the decision-making process. She rationalized that if the mattress did not meet her expectations, she wouldn't mind replacing it in a short number of years, highlighting a trend of prioritizing cost over long-term comfort and durability. Another striking revelation was her resistance to shopping in a traditional mattress store, seeking to avoid the perceived hassle of interacting with sales associates. This sentiment reflects a significant shift towards digital convenience and the value placed on seamless, hassle-free experiences. But not everyone shares this penchant for online shopping or making decisions based purely on price. Discussions further revealed terms like hybrid, edge support, and cooling technology, which have entered the consumer lexicon. Although their true understanding of these concepts might sometimes be superficial, and clarification is often sought after on search engines. Moreover, the marketing machinery is in full throttle during major sale events like President's Day, significantly impacting consumer behavior. Promotions by popular brands might ignite interest and urgency in purchasing a new mattress, but the real influence lies in the nuanced details, the look and feel, the assurances of comfort guarantees, and, increasingly, the appeal of immediate price reductions. It's become evident that pricing is a complex dance too high, and consumers walk away unpersuaded, too low, and skepticism about quality creeps in. What this all boils down to is a changing landscape where mattress retailers need to finely tune their strategies to address these diverse consumer approaches. Whether it's emphasizing quality and long-term investment or catering to price-driven customers with the allure of sales and convenience, the key is to balance these elements to capture the varied interests of today's mattress buyers. As the global economy weathers the trials of inflation and shifts in market dynamics, consumer trends evolve in intriguing ways. Our findings suggest younger consumers, particularly those of the millennial and Gen Z demographics, are harboring a buoyant outlook on the economic front, despite the prevailing challenges. This optimism is encapsulated by their perception of the cost of living, job security, and long-term economic prospects. Surveys undertaken for Marigold exhibit a notable 64% of millennials and a somewhat lesser, though still significant, 55% of Gen Z individuals who harbor an optimistic view of their financial standings, towering over the general 48% consensus. This youthful optimism further permeates their sentiments on job security, with both groups outshining Gen X and baby boomers in positive expectations. However, it is pivotal to recognize that underneath this sanguine veneer lies a pragmatic and considered approach to spending. The data reveals that over half of surveyed consumers are more diligently researching their preferred brands to ensure their hard-earned money is spent judiciously. This is a trend that cannot be ignored. Approximately 46% of respondents are prepared to wait, biding their time for that coveted sale, while another 48% are strategically leveraging loyalty rewards to maximize value from their purchases. In the intricate dance of decision-making, traditional drivers like price and brand loyalty recede slightly against the backdrop of quality, convenience, and customer service, factors which now command the spotlight. Consumers are clear. They seek assurance in the durability and functionality of their acquisitions, with a particular emphasis on seamless experiences and exceptional service. Diving deeper, our generationally segmented insights reveal that while Gen Z may exhibit less brand loyalty relative to others, under the right conditions, they can be recaptured as loyal patrons. A sizable 57% believe that a brand they forsaken could regain their favor. For millennials, pervasive touch points and accessible retail support are key to upholding loyalty, while Gen X gives prominence to the gamut of available options and customer-oriented support. Unsurprisingly, the seasoned cohort of baby boomers put their stock in customer service excellence but exhibit lesser allegiance to brands. In some, the landscape is one of cautious yet discernible enthusiasm, tempered by a strong inclination towards thoughtful consumption. Factors traditionally sidelined are now front runners in the consumer's psyche, reshaping brand strategies and compelling industries to adapt with agility. For our industry professionals, these insights are not just valuable metrics, but compass points steering towards sustainable growth and resonant consumer engagement. In an unprecedented move, the U.S. Department of Commerce announced affirmative preliminary determinations in the ongoing mattress anti-dumping case, affecting imports from a dozen countries. 
This measure sent significant ripples across the betting industry with the highest imposed rate, a staggering 744.81%, landing on mattresses from Slovenia. This range of duties is not insignificant, with figures scaling from 10.74% on Spanish imports to several hundred percent for other nations. It's crucial for industry professionals to grasp the implications of these duties, which were initiated in July following the petition by an alliance of U.S. mattress and foam manufacturers along with labor unions. The overarching goal of this legal move is to protect domestic producers from unfairly priced foreign imports, but the consequences extend far beyond the courthouse steps. The immediate reaction has seen a shift in production footprints, with companies like Artaban and KUKA catalyzing new manufacturing hubs in Texas, circumventing these duties, and asserting an on-the-ground presence in the U.S. market. This adaptability not only curtails the impact of the anti-dumping measures, but also redefines the industry landscape in terms of production strategy and competition. The preliminary nature of these duties does come with a caveat. Rates are subject to change. However, as the industry holds its collective breath for the final determination, businesses are scrambling to recalibrate their operations and pricing strategies. The anticipation builds leaving a significant amount of speculation and concern hanging in the balance. Furthermore, the scale of these duties underscores the gravity with which the U.S. is addressing the import issue, an assertion of a stringent trade stance that may well herald an era of heightened protectionism. The repercussions of this approach will likely include not only changes in manufacturing and distribution patterns, but also potential modifications to sourcing strategies as businesses look to alternative international markets or bolster domestic production to mitigate risk. As we monitor the unfolding situation, it's imperative to consider how these anti-dumping rates might influence consumer prices and product availability. With domestic mattress companies potentially gaining a more level playing field, does this presage an era of renewed growth and stability? Or will the increased costs of imported products result in a shift in consumer preferences? The narrative of the global mattress industry is being rewritten, as these anti-dumping measures usher in a new chapter characterized by strategic realignment and heightened domestic production. As we look to the horizon, industry professionals must remain vigilant and adaptable in an evolving market shaped by these significant trade decisions. Industry consolidation is a critical issue that can reshape entire sectors, often with far-reaching implications. Today, we're turning our attention to an acquisition that's been the focal point of heated discussions across the betting industry, the pending purchase of mattress firm by Temper Sealy International. This potential consolidation not only underscores the dynamic nature of our industry, but also reflects the strategic moves that define our future landscape. When Temper Sealy announced its intent to acquire mattress firm in a deal valued at $4 billion, the shockwaves were immediate. The ramifications of such a consolidation raise valid concerns from independent mattress shops to large-scale manufacturers. The prospects of the industry's largest mattress maker, combining forces with its largest retailer, could potentially redraw competitive lines and redefine distribution channels. As we followed the developments, the conversations among industry insiders reveal an undercurrent of unease. How will this acquisition affect the retail partnerships that Temper Sealy has nurtured or the competitive landscape for other brands within Mattress Firm's portfolio? The uncertainty looms large as retailers deliberate potential changes in merchandising strategies and suppliers consider the continuity of their relationships with Mattress Firm. It is interesting to note that while some retailers are pondering whether to shift their product assortments in the wake of this deal, manufacturers that currently supply Mattress Firm with goods are left to speculate on their future once this acquisition is complete. On the flip side, the integration of the two giants promises opportunities, a synergy that could streamline operations and offer consumers an enhanced shopping experience with a broader range of products under one roof. Despite the tentative nature of the deal, which has not yet reached its conclusion, Temper Sealy has reportedly moved forward with the Federal Trade Commission's requests, paving the way for further negotiations. There's a divestiture plan in the works as well, involving the sale of numerous sleep outfitters and mattress firm stores to maintain a semblance of balance in the marketplace. This revelation signifies not just a possible change in ownership, but a pivotal moment that points toward how the industry operates, 
signaling unprecedented levels of consolidation that are both promising and, to some, deeply unsettling. As with any significant change, the potential benefits are accompanied by a degree of risk and disruption. In times like these, the industry's resilience is tested, and its adaptability is of the essence. Even as we approach the anticipated mid-to-late-year closing of this transaction, we recognize that the true impact of this consolidation will unravel over time, bringing a new chapter to the narrative of the furniture industry. Whether this consolidation sets a precedent for further mergers and acquisitions, or whether it serves as a clarion call for others to innovate and adapt, only time will tell. But one thing is certain. We will continue to observe and analyze these tides of change, offering you the insights needed to navigate the evolving currents of the furniture business. As we draw this episode to a close, let's revisit the essential insights we've unpacked today. From the mixed performance of retailers during President's Day to the cautious optimism shown by younger consumers, the furniture industry continues navigating through a landscape filled with both challenges and opportunities for innovation and growth. We've also considered the dynamic betting segment, examined global economic impacts on pricing strategies, and pondered the implications of industry consolidation. It is our commitment here at Furniture Industry News to keep you, the professionals who shape this ever-evolving sector, well-informed and ahead of the curve. Be sure to subscribe and tune in to future episodes for your regular dose of analysis, trends, and expert perspectives. Thank you for listening, and remember, staying informed is paramount to staying ahead. We look forward to further enriching your understanding of the furniture industry landscape in our next episode.